In this video, we will show you how to make a detachable collar with a beautiful interlocking monogram design. For this project, we are providing a set of files in draw format so that you can make your own collar as shown in this video. The one called design template is to be used as a guideline so that you place the monogram in the correct position and at the right size. The rest, named color pattern, are patterns provided in multiple sizes so that you may choose the one that is suitable for you. Leave those patterns aside for now and load the provided design template draw file. Start the monogram tool from the lettering section. The new monogram dialog will appear. Have in mind that you can move the dialog around so that you can have a clear view of your monogram. Type the characters for the monogram. Most probably you'll want to use your own initials, so adjust the monogram options accordingly. I'll use this opportunity to show you the various monogram options in case you are not already familiar with the tool. This top part is where you define the monogram area. Now, suppose we want to have a rectangular area. Set the width and height at 55 mm. We may need to uncheck the proportional if it's already checked to define the width and height. The software automatically fits the selected template and its frame into the monogram area. Now, let's select a template. I'm using template number 22. This is a template for two characters, which I'm going to fit into the color. This template is almost square, so after selecting it, the size of the letters gets bigger to best fit the monogram area. I'll not choose a frame for this project, so choose no frame if a frame is already selected. Select a font. I'm using font XPG 181. Now, let's have a look at the stretch option. The software fits the monogram into the defined monogram area. The stretch option defines the percentage of the covered monogram area, which means that if you wish to make the monogram smaller or bigger, you may use the stretch option. Let's set the stretch at 100% so that the monogram fills an area of 55 by 55 millimeters. To finalize the monogram, click OK. You can work on your own version to personalize it as you wish. Now, let's see how you can edit the monogram after having created it. Remove the outline as we don't need it. Select a color for the monogram. The monogram looks nice. We can even enhance it using the node editor. In this mode, we can edit the monogram template. You may move any node or edit any of the lines to create your own custom template. The software will fit the characters into the shape you make. For this project, I will leave the shape as is, but I want to make the S smaller. To do that, right click on any node of that S and from the appearing menu use the Select Polyline option. Now all nodes of the S template are selected. Using the control handles at the corners you can click and drag to scale the monogram area of the S and make it smaller. You may also rotate, slant or stretch one dimension. Now let's move it to the top of letter K. What I'm trying to do here is to blend letter S together with K. So move it until you get them blended as you like. Take your time. You may also want to stretch the K a little bit. Notice that the letters are overlapping each other at some points. So if you move your mouse on top of any area where the letters are overlapping, you will get a blue highlighted area in the shape of the common part. 
Click on that area and this part comes to the front. You may arrange the letters in any way you like to get those interlocking characters. When you are satisfied with the design, switch to normal selection mode. Change the fill type to satin and then right-click on the shape and use the Break Apart option. We break the monogram into its subparts to give a different color to the S letter. Finally, we will use the stitch flow to design this satin bar as we like. Select each part and apply directions to any area needed. In general, since satin stitch goes from one side to the other, we are adding directions to make the satin flow parallel to the character's shape. Move and adjust the lettering into the template area. The design looks ready, so let's switch to Slow Redraw for a closer review before embroidering. As you can see, all black parts are embroidered first, and then we go to the green parts, so all green parts are on top of the black ones. But what if we want to have only certain parts be on top of others? Then we need to adjust the sequence. To do that, we will press an auto button to switch to manual mode. Place the red guideline to be the first on the sequence. So first we want this big line of letter K. Then we want the lower part of the green. After that, the lower part of the black, followed by the two other green parts, and finally the top black part. You can check the sequence once again just to be on the safe side. And the design is ready. Before we proceed, let's have a look at some embroidery parameters which are automatically adjusted by the software. In particular, I'd like to share some information about compensation. Compensation is added to make a design part a bit bigger while stitching out. The compensation value is calculated according to the fabric type and the type of embroidery that will go on that particular fabric. It is added to minimize shrinking of the fabric caused by the embroidery. But this can't be the same for all embroidery machines, so it's always good practice to test your design beforehand and experiment with the compensation to get the best and more accurate results your machine can provide. Now that the design is ready, prepare the files for your machine. Let's print out the pattern first. Measure your neck and load the suitable pattern file. For example, I will load the color pattern for neck size 12 to 13 inches. Go to File menu and use the Print Artwork option. When using the printout as your actual pattern, you'll want to print in actual size. Select your printer, click on Design Only, make sure that the scale is at 100% and proceed with the printout. Pick up the printed papers and lay them out one next to the other. Tape them together to create the life size pattern. Use a pen to draw lines on this opening the lines will help you align the parts when taping together. 
Carefully cut the paper around the pattern with scissors. Tape the two pieces together so that the solid lines align perfectly. Leave the pattern aside for now and let's get to make our color. For this project we will need two pieces of fabric. The size of the required fabric varies according to the size of the selected pattern. Two pieces of fabric ribbon, each measuring 40 cm in length and two pieces of stabilizer. We will also need adhesive spray, embroidery threads, hoop and the printed pattern. Now that we have gathered all the materials, we may begin sewing and embroidering. Place the pattern on the wrong side of one of the fabrics. Pin the pattern to the fabric. Trace the pattern, the opening for turning and the placeholders for the ribbon. Hoop the stabilizer. Load the design to your machine. Set the bobbin and needle thread and attach the hoop to the machine. Press the start button and embroider only the guide stitch. Remove the hoop from the sewing machine and place the fabric along the guide stitch, making sure that the lines we drew earlier on the wrong side are aligned with the guide stitch. Use adhesive spray or pins to secure the fabric in place. If you use pins, make sure that they won't harm your machine. Attach the hoop to the machine and we're ready to embroider the monogram. We will start with the black part, then change the thread to green to do this little lower part and keep on with the color changes until we're done. When the embroidery is complete, remove the hoop from the machine. Unhoop the stabilizer. Carefully remove the pins. Cut the stabilizer. Now lay the other fabric right side facing up. Place the embroidered fabric on top of it wrong side facing up and right sides together facing inwards. Make sure that the line we drew earlier is facing up. We will be sewing this line later on. Let's place the ribbons. First, fold the ribbons and secure with masking tape so that they won't be sewn accidentally. Place the ribbons inside the two fabrics, making sure that the ribbons and embroidered fabric are facing right sides together. Allow approximately 1.5 cm off the edge of the ribbon, that is about half an inch from the line we drew. Secure the fabrics, making sure the ribbons are inside the line. Let's sew along the line we drew earlier. Start sewing from an opening, leaving about a 6 cm, that is 2.3 inches gap. After finishing sewing, trim around the edges, leaving about 5 mm, that is slightly less than a quarter of an inch. Make sure you also trim the corners and edges of the ribbon. Now turn the collar right side out. Remove the masking tape carefully and use a pointed tool to shape the edges of the collar. Iron the collar flat, making sure to press the seam allowance of the opening to the inside. Close the opening by using ladder stitch. 
your project is done. Enjoy wearing this detachable color with your original customized monogram design.